The world's biggest company insuring people who export goods said today it was no longer covering anyone who wants to send stuff to Greece. Nothing will change before the election there on June the 17th and the latest opinion polls show the biggest parties in favour and against the bailout are at absolutely level pegging, which is no help to anyone really. In the meantime, there's talk of power cuts because there's no money to pay energy suppliers. So the rest of the Eurozone now contemplates something we were being told was inconceivable recently, that like a bad kebab, Greece is vomited out of the single European currency. Here's Paul Mason. Now, what happened today, Paul? Well, um, almost every day brings headlines to which the subtext is uh, confusion, lack of focus, uh, unreality, incompetence, uh, general clutching at straws as the train hurtles towards you. And today was no different. You mentioned there that the, Greeks, uh, the Greek press got hold of a letter from the Prime Minister saying uh, we could face blackouts by next week because we can't raise the money to pay the electricity bills. Um, we find out in the next 24 hours how much money has fled uh, Greece uh, over the past week. But we do know that in the past three months, 58 billion has fled Europe as a result of all this. Spain, Spain, as we're going to hear, is in serious long-term trouble and needs a bank bailout. Now, there is the mechanism to do that. The European Union has the money to do that. But right now, Spain doesn't want uh, to take that money. And what it's saying is, we don't want to be like Ireland. We, won't want to be, we don't want to be the slaves of Europe. This is, of course, on the eve, <laughs> tomorrow, of the Irish referendum, where the Irish are going to sign up for a austerity deal that the Spanish have just negotiated a one-year opt-out from. That's uh, confused, so is everybody else. And going back to Greece, is it really possible they could leave the Euro? The situation at the moment, and ever since that Brussels summit last week, uh, which I had the joy to sit through, was is most people think, look, Merkel's talking tough to try and get Greek voters to go back to the centre, to, to, to recoil in horror from any, uh, any exit from the Eurozone, so they, they vote how the European Union would like them. But most people also think that whether it's just before the election or just after, the Germans will have to relent. They'll have to actually say it's a bluff and they'll give the Greeks some extra time to pay or, like Spain, another year to meet the targets. That is what the, kind of, the money is on at the moment. But as we're about to see, you know, the ability of politicians to you know, affect economics ever since Lehman Brothers has been very limited. If Greece left the euro, the reaction would be frantic. Every government, every central bank and all financial markets would be faced with immediate choices. But the first 48 hours of a Greek exit would depend on precisely why the exit happened. Politically, it's impossible to expel Greece from the Eurozone and none of the parties likely to win the election want to leave, including the left. So a Greek exit would be messy, driven by economics, driven by capital flight, bank runs and the breakdown of cross-border payment mechanisms. If you lent money in Euros to Greece, uh, and, and your debt is then re-denominated into drachmas, which then falls against euros, you're going to get less money back. Uh, but I think there's also a significant likelihood that banks would uh, go under in Greece. A, l a large number of companies would probably be bankrupt as well. So there'd be more straightforward forms of default as well. With the far left riding high in the election and the far right on the march, any financial collapse would spell trouble. And there is already trouble. We've got total polarisation. We've got, you know, an economic programme that the Greeks didn't vote for. Um, we've got violence in the streets. We've got neo-Nazis in Parliament. I mean, that's before any problems of Euro exit. Yeah, absolutely. Before any problems of Euro exit. I mean, what people say, the other thing people say is, yeah, it's going to be awful, but it's awful now. For London, as a financial centre, there would be deep concern. Not over Greece, but over the three trillion euros worth of foreign money sitting in Italy and Spain, which might leave. The very sense of crisis and the sense of uncertainty is jittering the global markets, which has an effect on our real economy. Um, it's not through trade links, it's not through diplomatic links. <laughs> um, and so they would be deeply concerned that the sense of instability uh, would uh, mean that any other institution that was uh, not completely 100% robust uh, would sense the shockwaves and find themselves in a more perilous situation. 
British banks' exposure to Greece is small. Exposure to the sovereign debt of Italy and Spain is just over 10 billion each for Barclays, RBS and HSBC, according to figures released at the new year. But a euro breakup would reduce the value of government bonds across the eurozone, and here, RBS, with 70 billion total exposure, is among the highest in Europe. In the first 48 hours after a Greek exit, everything would depend on preventing the financial collapse of Spain. The money to do that exists. Right now, Spain is quibbling over the terms of accepting it. As for Greece, it would face not only banking and monetary chaos, its exports would more or less double in cost, and that's bad. There is a lot of fear. People are very, very worried about this. It feels like falling off the edge of a cliff to a lot of people. Uh, there's a lot of fear about poverty, about hunger, about political chaos. Greece imports 40% of its food at the moment, almost all its medicines, all its oil. And as the Greeks left, the credibility of the euro as a permanent currency union would be shattered. Well, George's Papa Constantinou is in Athens, where he was until very recently a government minister. He's now a PASOK candidate in Greece's forthcoming elections and is taking an anxious interest in events there. Paul Krugman is a Nobel Prize winning economist who's betting on a Greek exit from the Eurozone in the pretty near future. Now, he's here. Uh, do you think as a currency the euro is worth saving? Um, yes. I mean, I think it was a mistake, but it's a very different thing to say that it should never have been done and then to say that it should be, uh, that it should be allowed to collapse. So I would like to save the euro, but I don't think Greece in the euro is, a, is now a, a reasonable proposition. Now, Georgios Papa Constantinou, uh, why is leaving the euro a bad idea from the Greek perspective? Well, first of all, can I take issue with your bad kebab analogy, which I find offensive? Uh, the Greek economy is in a crisis, and the Greek people are going through a lot, and they deserve some respect. And I really did not find that very appropriate. Coming to your question, by all means, leaving the euro would be would lead to a reduction with the GDP falling by over 20 percent. It would double today's extremely high unemployment from 20 percent to over 30, 40 percent. It would lead to a halving of living standards and to widespread poverty. So today's situation is very difficult and very bad, but leaving the euro would uh, lead the economy back to the 50s and 60s, and that's not something that we want to live through. Can I, I, I would actually support. I think that was actually quite inappropriate to, to say that the Greeks have done something terribly wrong. They made errors. But the trouble and the reason, I, it's going to be awful. If Greece exits, it's going to be awful, at least in the short run. The trouble is that the situation for Greece is hopeless, and I mean that in a quite literal sense. Under the, under the euro, there is nothing on the horizon to suggest any recovery ever. We're looking at extremely high unemployment, extremely being shut out of the capital markets as far as the eye can see. And while an exit would be terrible, um, there would be, you can see how a recovery could happen afterwards. And I understand that nobody wants to bite that bullet. Nobody wants to take that decision, which is why I think it's actually the decision will be taken out of the hands of the politicians. It will simply happen. But if anyone could give me any story by which Greece ever returns to prosperity or even a halfway acceptable situation while staying within the euro, I'd be happy to reconsider. But I have not seen that story. Do you imagine such a story, Georges Papa Constantino? Actually, I do, and, and, I, and I differ here with uh, Paul. Uh, I think that clearly we need much more time than what the current program gives us to put the finances in order, but we're very close to running a primary surplus. The main problem is the economy isn't growing, and the economy isn't growing. It wasn't growing before the bailout. Uh, we was actually in recession since 2008 before we started the austerity package, but clearly the austerity package has made things much worse. So we need growth, and growth needs to come with the help of our European partners through some kind of a growth package with confidence returning and investment flowing back in. We have a privatization program. We should attract foreign investment. For, for all this to work, you have to have a stabilized situation. And at the moment, Europe is not giving the right signals. Uh, there's been right. some progress in, in improving the institutional, the institutional architecture, but not enough, uh, and the big moves uh, have not been made yet. I am hopeful that there is a wind of change in Europe at the moment, following uh, also the French election, 
which will change the, the emphasis away from exclusively looking at, at austerity, uh, balancing it more with growth, and having uh, the, the banks being able to, to bring again liquidity into the system. Because at the moment you have both a, a demand not being there because wages and salaries have been cut, and also a banking system which is not functioning and therefore how, doesn't provide even working capital. From a political point of view, how close are things to unmanageable there? We've had a very fragmented election result, uh, and we're going into an election where, as you, as you said, uh, the, the, the result is hanging in the air. Um, the polls at the moment um, give the, the Conservatives and the um, left party series uh, pretty much equal results. So um, it's, it's, it's touch and go where, where this will... It's clear that the problems are too big for one party to shoulder this. We tried right. this for two years. Yeah, we had an absolute majority parliament and we, and we failed because Paul That's the, that uh, is we the could point, not shoulder this by ourselves. My, my, my sense is that, in fact, the coalition in Greece was doing, doing its damnedest, doing, doing all of the things it was asked to do. And the trouble is that that was not producing growth, that nothing plausibly on the horizon will produce growth. Even if, the, even if the sternness of European austerity demands is being reduced a little bit, that's not going to produce growth. Uh, Greece is still highly uncompetitive on costs. The notion that you can close that gap through structural reforms in any reasonable time framework is unreasonable. Um, it's, it's all very reminiscent. Some of us you know, cut our teeth, in a way, on the Argentine crisis uh, more than a decade ago. And it was, it, it was in some ways easier because they still did have their own currency, but it was the same thing. There was no plausible route back to an acceptable, um, to an acceptable economic situation except via devaluation. And I think that's going to be the case here. We just don't see how this is ever going to be resolved otherwise. Remember, however, in the last two years, we clawed back half of the competitiveness that was lost in unit labor cost terms since the entry into the euro. And that Greece has some comparative advantages, some existing ones, such as tourism, shipping, and some new ones around energy, renewables, sure. logistics. Uh, there is a, its geographical position makes it uh, a, a very important play in the broader region. So it does have the natural resources, the people, the ideas to move forward. But yeah, it but, it, but it costs you to power. To get the engine going. Uh, yeah, and, and eventually you lost power. Well, no, but, no, but like I say, I, I mean, I actually take the same thing. I think there's a lot of fundamental strengths, which are reasons why Greece, after an exit, might recover much more quickly than people think. But the, the notion that, there's a, that, that, that the exports, essentially, is going to require exports one way or another, the, the notion that the exports are going to come on stream fast enough with no, under the current regime to avoid what is an ongoing catastrophe becoming unmanageable. I mean, it's, it's just, I mean, I hope, I, I'd love to believe that you're right. I really would love, because I don't, I, this is a horrible situation. It's a trap. Uh, it's, no, it's not the fault of the Greeks for the most part. But, my God, it's a, this, this is not, how, how much longer can this last? And the action-forcing event will, of course, be people mo pulling money out of Greek banks, and the ECB either has to offer unlimited credit, in effect, with no security, or pull the plug. And maybe they'll do that. Maybe they'll string this on for another year. But I, I find it hard to believe. Are you getting any signs in Athens of uh, concessions about to be made to you? I think it's quite clear that uh, uh, the, the Troika is realizing, also as, uh, partly mm -hmm. as, as a result of the election result, but partly also uh, looking at the fundamentals of, of, the, of the economy, that something's got to give. And if you ask uh, uh, any economist, they will tell you that the fiscal path that we've been following is, is, is extreme. We, we reduced the primary deficit by eight percentage points in two years. That has never been done before. And to continue on this path without some, you know, giving it some slack, it makes no sense. Because the, the, the more you hit on the fiscal side, the more difficult structural reforms become. Because the, 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 you know, the society is, 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 is in such a difficult situation that it's very hard to get acceptance around necessary Reforms, but reforms are always uh, have uh, people who, who, who oppose them. Therefore, you, you, you do need, and I think that the Troika is ready to give, uh, and our European partners, particularly Germany, because uh, it, it comes down to that, uh, certainly some leeway on the pace mm. of the fiscal, on the fiscal side. Okay, thank you very much. And hopefully on some other issues as right, well. Right, good. Thank you very much indeed.